All right, well, we learned a lot of stuff in this section. We learned about how PCI has three address spaces, configuration address space, which is 256 bytes and is accessible via port IO before memory mapped IO is set up, and once memory mapped IO is set up via the PCI X bar, then it is accessible via memory mapped IO. There is the configuration address space. The second is memory mapped IO spaces made available via the bars, the base address registers and also the port IO spaces where you configure a bar for port IO instead of memory mapped IO, but that's not the recommended mechanism. We also learned about PCIe and how it has four address spaces, three of which are the same and one the message space that we're not covering in this class. And so we saw the only real difference that we care about is the fact that PCIe has a four kilobyte extended configuration address space, which is only available via memory mapped IO. And in this section, we understood a little bit better how Intel uses PCIe internally on its CPUs and PCHs as sort of the internal fabric to expose information about configuration registers for internal hardware pieces like the DRAM controller or the LPC device, which are the two things that we're going to care about most in this class. Now, obviously, you could see there's a whole bunch of other stuff in the data sheets, things like SATA controllers and gigabit Ethernet. And so you can, of course, go off and check out those more on your own after the class. So returning to this picture of Miss Frizzle being the driver interacting with a NIC card, we said that there was the 256 bytes of configuration address space. And if she, for instance, you know, sent out a transaction to interact with one of those registers in there, it would go to the instruction decoder, memory controller, PCIe hardware. And then once it reaches the device, the device would, you know, decide how to interpret it. If it was something at the very beginning in the standard PCI header, like the base address registers, then, you know, it would hit a register and the device would ultimately use that to expose some information via memory mapped IO, or it could be setting a base address register for port IO. And we saw, for instance, how, you know, a little snippet of assembly writing to the CF8 register can take that particular value that's written, parse it according to bus device function offset, and use that to select some location inside the PCI configuration address space so that when writing to the CFC register, it would be writing to that config address space or reading from it. So with that, we're back to our map and we are done with the PCI configuration address space. And we are continuing on towards flash write protection, but we're gonna take a quick pit stop at PCIe option ROM attacks because now we know everything we need to know to understand how those work.